Good morning and uh, happy Easter. You know, there was a tradition in the early church that, that when uh, believers would meet one another, they would uh, greet each other by one saying, He is risen, and the other saying, He is risen indeed. And so on this special day, I'm going to say, He is risen, and you respond wherever you're at, He is risen indeed. So, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you this morning for uh, that you are alive and that you did raise from the dead. I thank you for this opportunity to share your love and your grace and your watchful care over us, Lord. And I just pray that you bless this time that we have. And I pray that wherever uh, anyone is listening to this, that you would uh, wrap yourself around them, express your love toward them, and assure them of your resurrection, Lord Jesus. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. So in John chapter 20, starting in verse 1, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said that they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb, both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in the, at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb also went inside. He saw and believed. They did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the other disciple went back to where they were staying. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for the privilege of looking into your word. And I pray that you would cause it to be alive to us this morning. I thank you, Lord, that you are risen from the dead. Lord Jesus, I just pray that you'd open our hearts and our ears to hear from you this morning. In your blessed name, Lord. Amen. There have been many turning points in my life. The day I adopted my two children, Kaylee and AJ, it was by an order of the court and with a signature of myself as well as the judge, I, who was not a father, became the father of two wonderful, beautiful children, and I have cherished my relationship with them. Being a father has changed my life in, in countless ways. Another turning point was the day I married my wife. By uttering those two simple words, I do. I have, uh, I have entered into a relationship with Jennifer that, uh, that is wonderful and magnificent, and that also is a turning point that has changed my life in wonderful ways. The day I answered the call to become a minister of the gospel, to dedicate my life to sharing and supporting and teaching Jesus and people about Jesus, well, that certainly changed my life. But you know what? Nothing can compare with the change that occurred when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. The day I confessed my sins to Him, that day has resulted in the assurance that my sins are forgiven. My sins are forgiven because of Him and what He has done for me. Faith in Him has assured me that I have eternal life, just as He promised. Accepting His offer of a daily relationship with Him has resulted in a calm assurance that He is ever-present. He promised that He would never leave us or forsake us, and I stand on that promise. A peace is mine that passes all understanding, and a joy that is beyond description, and a hope that endures every circumstance. I have these because of Christ Jesus and my and my uh, decision to accept Him as my Savior. And I'm sure many of you have also made that decision, and I'm confident that you have these same hopes. You know, John 20 by, begins by describing the event 
of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. His resurrection is the defining moment of all that we believe. If Jesus Christ be not risen, then we are most pitiful. In 1 Corinthians 15, 3, Paul declares, For I deliver to you, first of all, what that I also received, that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. One of the blessings of believing in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the hope that springs in our hearts. Because of our faith, we also have hope. You know, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 proclaims, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's hope because we have to uh, it's not necessarily a reality. We hope. Now, that hope is assured. It's, 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 it's a confidence. It's a hope. But because it is not in reality as of yet, it's still a hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Beginning with the presence of God uh, is a good illustration, although I cannot see Him. I cannot smell Him. I cannot touch Him. Although I cannot verify as a reality the presence of God, I trust, I believe, I have that hope, that assurance that He is with me. I can't see Him for God is Spirit, but yet I have that hope, that assurance that He is here. I believe that He is present simply because of His promise that I will never leave nor forsake you. The assurance uh, that he hears us is another good example. He hears us when we pray. We have no, uh, no evidence per se. It's not as though a, a bell rings when our prayer is delivered to heaven, no. We have this hope, we have this assurance. It's the substance of things hoped for. Our faith leads us to this substance and we can be sure, confident that he hears us when, he pray, when we pray for he has said he will lend his ear toward us. The assurance that we have that if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's ours. Not because when we pray and confess our sins, we necessarily even feel any different, for we can't go by our feelings. We are confident of these things because this is what God has said. It's what God has promised. And our hope is in Jesus Christ and on His Word. The assurance of healing, because He, he had said by His stripes, we are healed. At times, we do experience the reality, and we do witness somebody become, uh, experience healing uh, as a result of faith in God. It's a glorious thing, but it's a confidence and hope. So when I am sick, or when my children are sick, or when Jennifer is sick, or people in the church are sick, whenever anyone needs prayer for healing, I am confident to pray for healing for this is God's promise to us. Our hope is not based on something unreliable. Our hope is not based in a fairy tale or a legend. Our hope is definitely not based on ourselves. I sure am glad that my hope, my salvation, my assurances is not based in me. It's not based in my words. You know what? It's not even based in our faith. Our hope is placed only in Jesus Christ, the one who died and was raised again. All our hope is based in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For He is ever with us. 
We have this assurance that he is ever with us, for he lives. He ever hears our prayers. He is able to hear our prayers because he lives. We have assurance of forgiveness of sin, for he ever lives to make intercession for us. We have hope in his healing touch, for he lives. All of these promises, all of these assurances, all of this hope is expressed very well in the psalm that says, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. In every circumstance, he is able. And his ability begins with the truth that he lives. However, this is not only the hope we have in him. It's not the only one. We have the, the precious hope that since Jesus Christ be raised from the dead, we also shall rise. My friends, there's coming a day when the dead in Christ will rise, not through their own strength. I do not have the strength in and of myself to rise. I will not uh, claim that. It's not mine to claim. However, we will rise through the power of him who raised Christ Jesus from the dead. The book of Revelation assures us that Jesus Christ holds the keys to death and the grave. My friends, there is coming a day when death will hold no power over us, when the graves will be empty, and we will rise to live with him for eternity. For Jesus Christ lives, and he brings eternal life to all who put their hope in him. But that is not the end of it. For Titus 2 assures us of the blessed hope. The blessed hope that is ours in Christ Jesus. For in the fullness of time, Jesus Christ will come again. Oh, what a day that will be. When Jesus Christ comes again, as he ascended onto heaven and the, and the disciples were looking up at him as he disappeared into the, into the clouds, the angel said, this same Jesus who has ascended will come again. That's our blessed hope. It's our blessed hope, for He will come. He promised that He uh, was going to prepare a place for us. And if He goes, He'll return and take us, that, that we might be with Him where He is. This hope is ours because He lives. We will spend eternity with Him because He lives. This is why in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 8, Paul writes, What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and the participation of his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. You see, not even Paul understood how God was going to do this because, well, frankly, it's not up to Paul, it's not up to any of the apostles. It's not up to anyone to fulfill it. It's up to God. It's God's activity. It's God's power. And through God, we will be raised. I'll continue in verse 12. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already attained at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on, press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. 
I have never seen heaven, but I have this blessed hope. And my hope is in Christ Jesus. My hope is not in my works or in my righteousness alone. My hope is in the righteousness that Jesus Christ has imparted to me. My hope is in him. I don't know how he's going to do it. You know what? I really don't care. What I do care about, I want to see him. I want to be part of the resurrection. I want to look him in the face. I want to bow at his feet and worship him. But you know what? That's not the end of it. This glorious Easter morning, as we celebrate the resurrected Lord, although we are not together in body, we are joined in spirit. Once again, it's our assurance. It's our hope. For although we don't have evidence, I am here today and there is no one in this room, room save Jennifer. But my hope, my assurance is that we are one in Christ. It's our hope. We are joined in spirit. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. What a hope. What an assurance. We serve a risen Savior. We serve Him who heals us, provides for us, comforts us, leads us, forgives us. We have assurance of the resurrection, for He is the firstborn from among the dead. And you know what? We have that blessed hope. For He is faithful. He who is faithful has promised to come again to receive us to himself. Praise God. He lives because he lives we also shall live. Praise God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I do thank you this morning for your presence, for your assurance. I thank you for the hope that you give to us. I pray that you'd stir that hope, that faith, the assurance that you are alive, that you are present, that you hear us, that you're healing us, that you're providing for us, that you are ever sustaining us in every circumstance. Even in this circumstance, we find this in. I pray, should anyone within the hearing of my voice need your Encouragement, I pray that you would encourage them in your name. I pray that you provide in your name. I thank you that you are the gloriously risen Lord. Lord, should there be anyone hearing my voice that has not made that decision to accept you as their Lord, to accept your invitation for salvation, I pray that you would cause them to do so by simply asking you, confessing their sins, believing in their heart that you are who you say you are. You died and you rose again and you are our Savior. I pray that you would bless each one now in your blessed name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a happy Easter.